Hello and welcome to yet another questionable review where today we are going to be diving into, <sighs> lost me for a minute there, Bourne's one and only so far adult novel, How Do You Like Me Now? Uh, I really didn't like this the first time I read it um, and I really, really, really didn't like the main character, but actually rereading it this time, I found that I enjoyed it a little bit more, so it'll be interesting to see if it has gone up on my tier list any. Um, this book is about a Tory who's a writer and a public speaker. Uh, she wrote a book when she was 25 about how hard it is to be in your 20s and about how confusing it is and about how important it is to live the life that makes you happy instead of the life that everybody thinks you should be living. However, she's got this massive social media addiction that stems from obvious like self-doubt and like insecurity and the man that she told her readers was the love of her life has actually turned out to be a huge dick. So she's having self-doubts major and she feels like she can't tell anyone or even own up to it herself because she's meant to be one of these mythical people who have their shit together. Um, I don't gel well with Tori at all. She's yet another cynical protagonist from Born, but it's not just that. Like, I know that other people have applauded her in a monologue about being fake to her fans and on social media and only looking at her own face when a group picture is uploaded to Facebook as honest, but I just see it as really pessimistic and self-absorbed and no, I'm not 30 and no, I don't really have the biggest social media presence even as far as an average person goes, um, but I, reading this, I just don't understand how somebody can be as desperate for likes and attention as Tori is. I just don't understand it. Um, however, I still enjoyed the book and I still felt really sorry for Tori because all of her insecurities come from her feeling unappreciated by a boyfriend, which is a much more relatable feeling as a woman. Um, and uh, she's still really sympathetic and I'm still able to root for her because she's also very human. I feel like her cynicism wasn't like ramped up to caricature status as with some of Bond's other protagonists and it does die down a lot as the story continues so I felt like I was able to get past it myself, my own personal vendetta. I was able to kind of be like, okay chill. She stopped with all the, oh my god, everything's fake shit. I, I was able to get more into it. Uh, another relatable thing about Tori is that she worries constantly that she's a difficult woman or a spiky woman um, and this is mostly the fault of her boyfriend Tom who at first you kind of think, oh he's just a typical man, you know, he doesn't want to talk about feelings or relationships or, you know, the future, even though they've been in a committed six year long relationship. Uh, but as the story goes on you do kind of realise that he is a bit of a fucking narcissist and um, actually um, all of Tori's self-doubt comes from his not fulfilling her emotional needs uh, and this wouldn't be such a problem if he was willing to talk to her about it but every time Tori tries she's met with an immediate shutdown and uh, an explanation that actually all of this is her fault and she's just overthinking it too much and he's just a typical man. Um, she, uh, Tori, she like goes along with this for so long and she like just accepts that it's her fault and she does everything that she thinks he wants in the relationship, including going to get a therapist at his suggestion, even though it's pretty damn obvious where all her problems are stemming from. Uh, but it's actually this therapist that gets her to realise what's going on, and finally, finally, at the end of the book, she leaves Tom, despite being 32, and afraid that she's going to go into the dating scene again and all of her friends are married with kids and she's going to be the weird single one and anyway all the good men are taken um but yeah she does it <laughs> it's a pretty powerful story even i can admit that and apparently it tackles a lot of issues that every woman encounters when they're in the 30s uh, but I, i'm not in my 30s can't relate to that don't know what i'm talking about so i'm gonna get into my categories so it does sound like i know what i'm talking about a little bit uh, like I said, my first time reading this I really disliked Tori um, and her rampant cynicism but actually on my second reading I found her a lot more bearable and dare I even say likeable. Um, her mate Dee was always my favourite though because uh, she was this other cynical spiky woman, a bit less so 
than Tori, maybe. Or maybe a bit more so, but just in a softer way, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, she finds herself, like, accidentally falling in love and accidentally falling pregnant. And so she uh, kind of gets to experience all these things that she and Tori have been so cynical about for all this time. And finding out that there's a bit more nuance to everything and that everything was not as straightforward as they might have thought. Uh, she also gets the funniest lines and she gets to give us some insight into the feminist issues surrounding motherhood, like how everyone wants to tell you the best way to be pregnant and to give birth and to raise your child as if like your public property all of a sudden just because you got spunked in. Like it's very very strange. Um, the only other main character is Tom and obviously you're not supposed to like him but actually he's so subtly done that um, he you kind of don't realize this at first and i'll get into that a bit more in a minute as i go through my categories but for now i shall give born a nice three out of five for characters <clears throat> again born upped her game with the humor in this book it never quite had me laughing out loud minus like one line from d when they were in this restaurant it was great um but it was more of a wry and dry humour compared to the brash humour of her other books, which is understandable considering this is meant to be a grown-up book. Uh, Bourne did keep a bit of her juvenile humour in here, uh, and personally I found it a bit cringy. I was a bit like, come on Holly, you're meant to be a big girl now. Uh, but, uh, you know, some adults do have cringy juvenile humour. Holly herself is obviously included in this, and so I didn't really have a problem with it. And uh, I could even say I liked it. Apparently it's just Bourne's style of comedy and that's fine. Uh, so it's not quite, you know, Bridget Jones, but I definitely enjoyed it. And it's definitely another solid three out of five. <laughs> okay, so as far as representation goes, there's a lot of things to unpack. So forgive me if I get a little bit all over the place with this one. Uh, first of all, I just want to mention the fact that I like that Tori likes sex um, and that she worries how often she and Tom have sex. Obviously it's not something that you should obsess over which like Tori kind of does a little bit um, but at the end of the day it's something that is on your mind and physical intimacy is just as important as any other kind of intimacy in a relationship. Uh, I don't read enough books where the women are just as sexually charged as the men if not more um, and I definitely feel like Holly should incorporate this theme into her YA books a bit more because uh, it's an important lesson for young girls to learn, you know, that you're allowed to like sex. Um, the social media obsession, uh, while I found it a bit annoying, it's also done really well. Um, Tori will often stress over something and then turn it into a positive post on her fan page, uh, oftentimes acting as though she had the complete opposite reaction to what she actually had. So for example, she'll get um, angry about putting on a bit of weight or upset about getting lines around her eyes, um, but then she'll go on her page and like celebrate these things about herself. Uh, and make her readers celebrate these things about herself. Um, she talks a lot about how the online world is this big fake out where people are like projecting this image to other people that isn't quite the real thing. And to an extent, I think this is true, but obviously not everybody thinks this way, not everybody is doing this. Um, it is an issue that a lot of people struggle with, um, what with the rise of social media and everything. You know, FOMO isn't an actual unironically used phrase it, for nothing, <laughs> and that is unfortunate, but it's just the way it is. Uh, I can't talk about everything that she tackled in here because uh, the structure of the narrative um, there's not really one set plot line to follow here and it's definitely very based in real life in that like everything just flows and goes on and we skip bits so we can get back to the oh nothing's really happened but now something is happening uh, it's very very true to real life in that way um, so there are a lot of things that just get mentioned in passing um, and it would take some time to go over them all so let me just award Bond with a fat 4 out of 5 here and move on the message. Um, I suppose the main thing that this book focuses on is emotional abuse and as it's an adult novel born really got to go in and not shy away from the sort of things that emotional abuse uh, involve uh, unlike say places I've cried in public um, which was obviously aimed at younger readers. 
Um, if anything though, Bourne went for the really subtle route, which in a lot of ways I felt was better, because emotional abuse can be a really subtle thing. Uh, for the majority of the book the first time reading it, even I questioned whether everything was just in Tori's head and she was like projecting her own anxieties onto her relationship, but actually it turned out that uh, her anxieties about her relationship were being projected outwards into her other stuff um, and it was Tom who was like making her do that. Um, it was also to do with like the realistic way that Tori is written. Like she, you really feel like you're inside Tori's head in this. So like obviously because she's questioning herself you're questioning her and I found it really I found that really interesting, I found that really clever. Bourne's just a fucking great writer, like honestly she really is. And even my second time reading, I like, even though I knew what was going on and I was frustrated with her, I still felt really really sorry for her because she obviously just doesn't even realise, even though she's like meant to be, I mean like she is, but she's meant to be this strong independent woman and this man's getting her down and it's just so sad and so frustrating and you just want to give her a shake. <laughs> um, on the second reading as well I got to see more of the nuances that I missed the first time around and I could really appreciate how artfully crafted it is in terms of Tom because it must have taken a lot not to make Tom this like cartoon baddie and to really make his actions towards Tori questionable but almost like on the edge of excusable. Uh, some people might even have rooted for the relationship to get better again but ultimately Tori had to leave because no relationship is worth more than your own self. Not a one. Uh, and I love that. I know that I said in my last review that I wanted a happy ending as far as a relationship goes but since this one was doomed from the start like technically I got my happy ending here in the form of Tori striking out on her own and it definitely felt like a happy ending to me so I'm perfectly satisfied now like Bourne the rest of your romances can crumble into dust and I literally don't give a shit as long as Tori leaves Tom every time. <laughs> Uh, I did just want to talk really quickly about the cheating scene or the almost cheating scene. Um, there is a proper way to go about things if you're in a relationship like Tori is and cheating is not it. Um, even though when you're reading the scene with this other like young guy you're really rooting for her to just kiss him because you know that if she gets over Tom kind of in a physical sense she'll be able to get over him in other senses and in a lot of ways it would be the easy way out from this relationship. Um, but you know at the same time that it would give Tom too much satisfaction. I mean the whole point of his game is that he's technically not doing anything wrong and as long as Tori isn't leaving him he can like convince himself of that and pretend that this is the case. But if she were to cheat, any responsibility for the rumination of the relationship would fall completely on Tori and Tom would be able to get away like scot-free type thing. Um, he'd never have to face the fact that his behaviours had a part in it as well, even though you could argue that his behaviours were what made Tori want to cheat in the first place, yeah? Um, I think if Tori would have cheated, I would have forgiven her, but I like the fact that she didn't and Bourne chose to have her remain faithful because it doesn't set an example or give anyone an excuse for yucky behaviour like cheating in the real world. Even if you're going through a terrible time, or your partner's horrible, you need to find that courage within yourself to just leave. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> um, and the other thing that I did want to talk about was the therapy session. The therapy session got me. Tori's taught by a therapist the lesson that she's been trying to teach 20-something year olds with her book. Um, showing that throughout your life you're going to struggle with how people perceive you and how this makes you perceive yourself but in the end nothing's more important than doing what makes you feel happy. And I like how she also pointed out that Tori's fans perception of her was stopping her from leaving Tom because that's the happy ending but like I said earlier the real happy ending is that Tori's powerful even without him uh, and they can be too like Tori's basically teaching them that they not teaching them that they need a man but that it's better to have a man and that everybody can have that um, happy ending, that Cinderella, Snow White, fairy tale happy ending. Um, and to be honest, if I were to be one of Tori's followers in this fictional world and she was to 
you know, bear all about how her relationship was ultimately not the relationship for her and that she was happier to leave, I would think that that was a better happy ending than because she found a man being her own happy ending. I mean, I know which one I'd choose at the end of the day. So, four out of five for message, I think. Uh, the femme factor. Bourne really came out as full force with the feminism in this one, and I love it. I could not be happier about this. Uh, from weddings, to monogamy, to pregnancy, to publishing, uh, you know, a lot of feminist issues are discussed, and honestly, there's just too many to go over all of them. Uh, my favourite was probably the fact that, um, I don't know, the bride doesn't get a speech at her own wedding, which is something that I've always thought was fucking ridiculous. Um, but um, the fact that women's careers are often seen as less important than having a family and having children, uh, I think everyone can agree it's massively stupid, but like it gets explored kind of in depth in this. And I just love it. I just love that. I've always loved any kind of discussion about that because it doesn't, like, who gives a fuck what women are doing with their lives? Like, it literally makes no sense. And I'm not going to go off on a feminist rant because I know that people hate that. <laughs> but I just, you know, five out of five for the femme factor, lads. <laughs> uh, for my personal score, honestly, I actually really enjoyed reading this and I found that me and Tori actually got on quite well for this time around, so I'm gonna give it a 3 out of 5. <laughs> uh, so that gives How Do You Like Me Now uh, 20 out of 30, which edges it into my top spot. Um, in all, I'm pretty impressed with Vaughn's first foray into adult writing. I know she's working on another book that's set to come out this year, I think in the summer. Um, so, you know, I'm really looking forward to it and I read the little excerpt from the back of this book and it sounds like it's going to be, you know, more of the same, if not more of more of the same. Like, oh my god, I'm really looking forward to it. So, for now, this has been yet another questionable review of a grown-up book this time, which is different. Um, <laughs> and I'll see you on the other side.